A Dolls of Color Around the World. Dolls of Color Around the World. And we have Joyce, the director of the museum here. With us is the 27th year. And basically this year we just decided to expand it so we're doing Dolls of Color Around the World. And what that basically does, it covers the African diaspora. So this year we've included dolls from Mexico, dolls from Brazil, dolls from Guatemala, dolls from Costa Rica. We cover dolls around the world. That's the reason we call it Dolls of Color Around the World. And of course the traditional African American dolls. I also see the fantastic quilts. Was this a contest? Uh, um, Ray Johnson, who is the um, marketing director for KGLH, his mother, Betty Jean, made quilts. And when we went to get the dolls from him, he said that he had a whole bunch of quilts. So what we thought, instead of doing our traditional murals on the wall, we thought that the quilts would make a good background. And considering they're folkloric and folkloric arts, we thought they'd be really, really good background. And what you see, it turned out really well. So most of the quilts you see are Betty Jean's quilts. Oh, so it's a collection. It's a collection. Oh, nice. All right. The dolls that are in the case are from Durango, Mexico. Mm-hmm. The ones on the top? The do ones on the top are Teresa Tolliver. Everything on that side, over here, and over there are all Teresa Tolliver's dolls. Okay. Also, the artwork in the back was done by Teresa Tolliver's students. And the thing about Teresa, she basically uses anything in the house for her dolls. Uh -huh. If you come and get a little bit closer on some of these dolls, you'll see that she's used a lobster claw, she uses pins, she uses buttons, she uses leftover materials. So basically her whole philosophy is you can take anything and make a doll. It's a very sustainable and recyclable uh, right. concept and of And she art. takes recycling to the limit. Excellent. And then, you know, traditional pieces of fabric, whatever she has. Um, like the dolls in the back, a lot of these are what you would use in a garden to hold up different vegetables and fruits. Also the king, he's sitting on top. That's one of the type of sticks that you use to hold up tomato plants. And so basically she took them, put in paper mache, put it on top, and she made it a crown for the king. Nice. Uses a lot of metals. The dolls over in the corner are what she calls the ancestor dolls. Those dolls have their own spirit and own soul. Those are what she calls the crossover dolls, and they represent her ancestors. Okay. She also has some more along here. Then we get into what, the traditional Barbies. This, this is a, a rare collection. That's a rare collection of Barbies, but it's, you know, kind of like the signature Barbies. Barbie has tried to expand its range so that it has different dolls from different parts of the world. So we told people, if you have Barbies from different parts of the world, please bring those in. So we ended up with the South African Barbie, and we also ended up with the African Barbie, and then the traditional drama queen Barbie. Down here at the bottom, <laughs> we have Michelle Obama. That's an Obama puppet, Michelle Obama puppet. Oh, wow. This doll right here has a unique story. Um, one of my friends was out hanging out and she was a homeless person sitting on the corner and the homeless person was making these dolls. So it's a combination of rags and miscellaneous buttons and it represented the homeless culture. So we set those two together in the basket. Right here, this doll right here is Dottie. When I got Dottie, I was the same height as Dottie. She's what you call a traditional walking doll. This doll right here in the pink, the ballerina, is with Lula Washington, who's kind of famous. She has Lula Washington Dance Company, um, and that re represents ballerina dancers. Up at the top, somebody gave me those who used to work for Mattel, and again, those are Barbie special editions. From the 60s, I gather. Yeah, those are what you call really old traditional Barbies. Because every year Barbie comes out, well, they have 2002 on them, um, the costume's a little bit older than that, but every year Mattel comes out with a traditional black Barbie. It's made out of paper towels. Oh, that's interesting. She's, she's like a Barbie doll with a fantastic dress. Mm -hmm. But made out of paper towels. The ones at the top there are Cheetah Girls, right in the center. That's the more modern version. Get a bit of the quilt. That's a beautiful quilt. Made by the same person. That she won that second place in the San Bernardino County Fair. And if that's second place, I would like to see what first place looks like. Beautiful. And it gave us the clowns. 
It was so cute. She said she has a collection of over 100 plants. <laughs> it's funny, people come to the exhibit and then all of a sudden they say, I want to bring my doll. I didn't know I could bring dolls. So then they end up coming back bringing a couple of dolls. So we keep adding, adding, adding. Yeah, my mom, she said she wants to bring a samurai doll. I'd love to have it. <laughs> little Bill is a famous doll. Oh, wow. Talking to Little Bill. Made from Bill Cosby, was made famous by Cosby, made by Fisher Price. And the teddy, the teddy just was cute, and he came and I said, We gotta put him somewhere. So he's Teddy in a dress. Teddy in a dress. <laughs> and you have more of the traditional rag dolls. Nice. Oh, that's fantastic. I love that. That's device. amazing. Look at that. That's over like 50 different ties. That won a third place at the San Diego County Fair in Del Mar. Okay. This is fantastic. You know, the angels with this uh, mm -hmm. very old uh, lace, handmade lace. is just fantastic. And then the feather and the brooch at the top. That's beautiful. That lace is so old. And it's nice that they're framed like that so they were easy to hang. And the earrings. Yes. You look at that, that's oh, Condoleezza Rice. It is. <laughs> you can see it better in the camera. It's, it's much better in the camera. <laughs> um, the same person that made the quilts, this little doll right here, is her, her little rag doll version. You have, a, you have your miniature? I have a bag. Okay. That's good enough. So these are all by um, the famous doll collector Floyd Bell. He's in charge of the Black Doll Association, which is a really well-known um, club. Okay. Sometimes when people make quilts, they make them in memory of, like in this quilt is somebody made for somebody to use as a memoriam to them. Then we keep going. You'll see Martin Luther King. It's such Dr. a beautiful King quilt, my Scott goodness. King. And that's really, look at the little intricate work that, that's done with that. It is. I'm getting the detail right here. And on the camera, once again, you can see it really close. Yeah. Such an act of love, my goodness. And that says, in, in loving memory of Marilyn Howe. Must have taken them at least two years to do. Because with all those petals and stuff, those individual petals. Mm -hmm. Now you're on the... On this side. Okay, you're on Pat Shivers. These dolls, these dolls to me look like real true people. Yeah. You have the man sitting on top of his throne there with all the lovely ladies around him. She has really unique faces on her. Her face, her dolls either have no face or really unique faces. Yeah, she puts in the eyelashes too, mm -hmm. which and is those are real, interesting. Yeah, those are beautiful. And when you get to her dolls in the center, the ones that have dread, they're actually her son's dreads. Okay, also the, the quilt in the back is another one of Betty Jean's quilts. So beautiful. I love that one. So beautiful. These dolls over here are considered the old soul dolls. Okay. You got the angel, you got the devil. Angel with real wings. Real wings, those are real. Wow. Crystal Jackson has the glass figures at the top. Oh. Tell me more about this man. It's, I think it's just fantastic, his work. <laughs> and it's exquisite, real intricate. Exquisite work of arts, I mean. And those are by Crystal Jackson. She has a, a little bit of reading on the other side of it. She says the jewelry represents a symbolic gift. And it's called Sculpture Peace. P-E-A-C-E <coughs> Peace. -E and she has this beautiful smile. But the, the face are so... We have an Obama doll. The first Obama doll? <laughs> first Obama doll. Looks a little frumpy. But he's a talking Obama doll. Oh. We have the famous Fulani What's dolls. What's the story on these two? These are, you know, just the... Things. These are porcelain. These are porcelain dolls. But the thing I like about them is the faces of the dolls look like real people. It I is. I mean, when you look at it, you can say, Oh, I have a relative who looks like that. Or somebody looks like that. So all these dolls in this bottom of the case are porcelain. Wow, they're fantastic. I, I love the one on the purple. And the woman on the end, she's just so, this face on her is just amazing. I know. The expression of her face. 
so nice. But they're all made out of work gloves. Just to kind of describe them and, and tell what your thought process was okay, while you were name, doing this. Na your name? My name is Cheryl Williams. Okay, come up Stand to the dolls. Stand by your dolls. Stand by your dolls right there. Okay. Um, they're just gloves. And how, how did you come up with the idea? I mean, did you find a glove and just put something in it? Or were you playing with your kids and No, glove? I actually had to start wearing gloves because of um, arthritis. And just one night I was pulling the glove off, woke up, and all of a sudden I saw a doll. So I just started making dolls with them from then. The I've gloves were talking to you? That's it. <laughs> I've been making larger dolls and I just started making smaller ones. They are so wonderful. Well, thank you. And she's going to do a workshop on February 25th featuring these type of dolls. So anybody can come in and make a doll just like that one. Oh, we'll get somebody to, to come in and make dolls. I mean, this is, it could easier, it couldn't get easier. No, it definitely could not. <laughs> and I think that was the whole process. Well, that one represents um, Catherine Dunham oh. from Dunham Technique. And then we have these little tiny, tiny, little bitty things. Let me show you. These are called Lily May. Let's see if we get it up here. Hey, we start oh, here so with our dolls from Puerto Rico. Also, we have a Mama Lou, which is a famous folklore doll from Jamaica. Oh, that's so pretty. The Peekaboo dolls. Those are from Cuba. Oh. As you move over, you go to Brazil. Okay. You have all the Brazilian dolls. Shango. Shango. Those are with Linda Udine, who's the artistic director of Viva Brazil. That's her collection. She's always in Salvador Bahia and is always in Brazil, so she brought a lot of these um, dolls from Brazil. You have the Olagum doll. The Opo doll. The Yanko doll. As you're moving over, you go to the dolls from Guatemala. The top, you have all the Asian dolls. You have dolls from Guatemala and Mexico. Mm -hmm. You have another Jamaican doll. And then you go down and you have um, Native American. Those are actual pillows. Oh, how cute. And then as you go, keep going around, you've got more Guatemalan. You're going to traditional African dolls. Next, you have a doll from Cote d'Ivoire with the mask on. Here in the basket, you have an Ethiopian doll, and you also have a doll from India. Several dolls in there from India. You have an actual voodoo doll here. <laughs> An actual voodoo doll. And the clothespin dolls. Those are the clothespin dolls. And as soon as you get swing to the other wall, we added another element, the Dolls of Hope, and Cynthia's right here. These are her dolls. She's going to tell you about those. Okay, Cynthia, come over here. Okay. Cynthia, tell us about your dolls. Uh, some of the dolls that are up here are part of my private collection. I'm a HIV AIDS educator and I travel internationally, so when I go to different countries I buy dolls for, for my private collection. But I have a program called Dolls of Hope, which was uh, started in 1998 as a World AIDS Day activity where we make handmade cloth dolls for AIDS orphans. And um, so this is what this uh, part of the exhibit <coughs> is showcasing my Dolls of Hope project. The pictures on the wall are pictures um, that I took. I was on a seven country tour in 2000 when I left Durban, South Africa attending the International AIDS Conference. So I wanted to go to West Africa in each country I went to, I stopped and I met with AIDS activists to learn how HIV was impacting communities and I was distributing my dolls as well. 
Uh, these dolls here in the middle, they're from KwaZulu Natal. They're made by the, uh, in the they're called Indabele uh, dolls. They're made by the Indabele and Zulu tribe. And these dolls were made by a group of grandmothers who had lost all of their adult children to AIDS and were making dolls to support themselves. And um, there were two South Africans who had attended a workshop that I implemented at the International AIDS Project who went and worked with these women. And when I found out, I brought them to the States in 2000 for World AIDS Day. And I'm thinking they're going to bring these little handmade cloth dolls that we make, but they brought these dolls. And so what I've been doing is I commissioned these dolls from women in South Africa who are making dolls as part of income generating programs and I sell them for them in a local boutique here in LA. Um, oh, yeah. And that's it. And then within the entire exhibit I have about 90 dolls from my own personal collection. Well thank you so much for sharing.